Hello, my name is Steve Ernst, and I just wanted to share with you a quick uh, video on a plugin that I found called Particle Instantiator. It's on the Blender Market. It's only $15, and it's a very reasonable price for what I find to be very useful. And it turns particles, particle systems, into rigid bodies. So that's uh, something I've always wanted to do for if you're like simulating a character who's shooting a gun, and you want you want the gun to eject the shells and interact with things and interact with themselves. That's what this does. So, um, I have on this layer, I have made a very small something that resembles a bullet shell. So we're just going to use that as our particle. I have it set up to be a uh, active rigid body, and the origin to the geometry so that it's it behaves properly. So uh, let's set up the rest of the scene. Let's just set up a plane. Make it bigger. Extrude that up so we have a corner, and let's just give it some thickness because that helps with the uh, with rigid body sims. Even thickness on the solidify that'll work. Apply that, and now come up here to physics and add a passive. And just for the fun of it, we're also going to add a collision that kills particles because the way this plugin works is uh, when the particles die, that's when it converts them to a rigid body. So. That should be good for that. So let's add a plane for our particles to emit from. Let's go over here. Let's just dump them all into the corner like this. Okay. Come over and add a particle system to it. A uh, new particle system. Let's just say 500 particles. Um, let's see. We got this set up to go there. Let's end this at, I don't know, 150. Lifetime, yeah, lifetime doesn't matter because it's going to kill our particles when they collide. So let's see how this is working. And you can see that they are dying, which is exactly what we'd expect. Let's strengthen this a little bit so that it shoots them into the corner. Um, let's see, what's our next step we could do? Yeah, all right, I think the next thing we'll do is we will set up um, the object that we'll be using, which is a cylinder that I made. We also want to check died so that we can still see them even when they're dead. So you can see they're kind of all stuck there. Um, also, let's make this size one so that it uses 100% of the size of our original object. So you can see they're shooting out, they're dying, but they're sticking around. <laughs> sticking around, literally. Um, but they're all standing straight up. So let's change that under the rotation tab. Bump that angular velocity up, um, check dynamic, and now they're all tumbling the way you would expect them to. All right, great. Now you notice, of course, they're not intersecting or interacting. I mean, they are intersecting, but they're not interacting or bouncing off each other, partially because we're killing them as soon as they're touching. But um, if we weren't, if they were sticking around, they would be intersecting and rolling around strangely. So that's what this plugin fixes. Now, what you need to do first is bake your particle system, but you do not click this button, because the way the plugin works is it requires you to click this button. <laughs> it took me a while to figure that out, and I was very frustrated. So I'm trying to help you all to not make the same mistakes that I did. So click bake, and you can see our particle system is now baked, and everything is lovely. So, I believe that's all we need to do for that. So, once you have installed the plugin, you will find this little these tabs called Instantiate Things. <laughs> that's what you're going to use um, for this particular thing. Um, the plugin does a lot of stuff, but I mainly got it for the rigid body, rigid body portion of it. So, that's what I'm showing you today. So, when you click Instantiate Particles, it reads your bake, goes through, and makes all of those particles individual objects. So if you want to change your particle system after you click Instantiate, you're going to have to delete Instantiate your particles and free your bake, and then make your changes, bake it again, then Instantiate your particles again. So you can see that we now have individual objects on our particles, but they're not rigid bodies yet. They're still dying as soon as they're hitting the wall. So we will fix that. It's important to have the first object that you're instantiating to have a rigid body on it because that's what it looks at when it makes this next calculation. So come down to the instantiate rigid body 
initialize rigid bodies it initialize 500 new rigid bodies so play the animation that's apparently important and you can see that some particles drop down these are the ones that are physics now they're not behaving the way they should it's just this step here the reason you hit play is to give blender a reason or a chance to <laughs> realize that these are rigid bodies apparently that's what the uh, documentation says so once you click finalize rigid bodies that's the final step finalize 500 rigid bodies you can actually hide this uh, original particle system and click play and you can see oh my goodness particles that are rigid bodies and they're bumping into each other and behaving exactly as you would expect so that is awesome if you ask me now uh, the thing to keep in mind is to have your rigid body world settings set up to a pretty high steps per second the default is like 60 so I cranked it up to 200 um, that's important or else they'll probably fall through your <laughs> collision object uh, not all of them but most of them probably <laughs> so keep that in mind if you're experiencing that problem if they're falling through if they're getting stuck in the cracks <laughs> then bump this up and uh, it should work fine um, if you render at this point you will still be rendering your particles your original particle system on top of the rigid bodies you don't want that so you'll probably want to move this to a different layer uh, but if you do keep in mind that if you need to unbake your particles oh, I actually move this as well <laughs> Keep in mind that if you need to make any changes to your particle system, uh, you're going to have to move that back to the same layer that you have your collision object on, or else it's not going to work properly. So there's several things to keep in mind with this, um, but if you do it right, it works beautifully, and it's totally worth the $15 that you would have spent on it. So I hope this was helpful. Um, I wish I'd had a video on YouTube like this when I was first messing around with it, because it took me a little bit to figure out what exactly I was doing wrong. But once I did, then I was quite happy with my purchase. Um, so yeah, um, that's about it. I hope this helps somebody. And uh, if you like this video, give it a like. Whatever. I don't care. Anyway, that's about it. Thanks, guys. So, see you later.